Hi, and welcome back to our broadcast. I'm Brian Likens, and you know, I was thinking about uh, as I was as I was growing up as a young child, I was part of a family business. My father owned a, a custom cabinet shop, and my dad was known as a barterer or horse trader. And to some people, that may be a derogatory term, but it's really how people did things years ago. If they needed something or wanted something, instead of going to a store and paying a a you know, full price or a purchase price or something, they would, if someone else had something that may be a little used, they may have had it for a little while, didn't use it anymore and are willing to let go of it or, or trade it for something else that they needed. Have you ever bought something and you, after you get it, you're like, man, I really wish I hadn't spent that money on it, but now I've got it. What do I do? Well, you put it up in the garage or you put it up in the attic or you put it up, you know, in your closet or you store it away. And then you know, what do you do? A lot of people, they put it in the yard sale. Well, dad would go to people and he would say, Hey, um, you know, I really need that or I could use that. Are you willing to get rid of it? Can we do some trading? Can I, I've got this, I'd be willing to trade or I'll do some work for you in, in exchange. And you know, that is a, 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 a system that they used years ago. And my dad would always tell, I would say, dad, how do you, how do you get, how do you do that? And he's like, Brian, you have not because you ask not. He wasn't ashamed to go and ask people. And you know, I didn't know it then, but I know where he got it. He got it from Jesus. He got it from in Matthew chapter seven. And we're going to look at this and read this uh, on this broadcast. But he got this from a principle of God's word. And not only asking men or, or man or a person or somebody if you need something or, you know, to go up and ask them, but he would ask his heavenly father if he needed something in his life. He was a person of prayer. He was a person that would, he would ask for wisdom from, for, from God how to do things in life because he only had an eighth grade education. And an eighth grade education running a business and dealing with all those things, sometimes you come up with things that is like, this is bigger than me. I don't know how to handle this. But my dad would pray, and when he would pray, the answer would come. Somebody else that would would say, hey, I know how to do that, or I know the answer to that, and they would help, and God would bring somebody, but he would ask, and he would always tell me that, you have not because you ask not. And you know, and that's a, that is a principle of the kingdom of God that works in the earth. It works in the natural. The laws of God, the principles of, principles of God that are in God's Word, the way that God teaches about the kingdom operates in the earth. You have not because you ask not. And you know, a lot of people are so afraid to speak to someone to because of fear of rejection. But what's the worst? Dad would always say, what's the worst they can do? They just simply say no. Okay, maybe it's a little, maybe you get a little embarrassed or it's a little, a little shame there. A little ask. You don't have to be shame, uh, full of shame or embarrassed if they don't, you know, you don't know what somebody is willing to do until you ask of them. And that is a principle that Jesus laid out in Matthew chapter 7. And he laid this out to give us a way of life, a way to operate in life. Not only asking of our Father, but asking in the natural. But most importantly, asking of our Father. And many people won't even go to God and they won't ask the Father of anything because they think He's too busy. He's got enough on His plate. God doesn't want us to, you know, I don't want to ask God for something that, that I want. I only want to ask Him for something that I need. Well, that's not the, the principle of God's kingdom. That's not what the Lord wants us to do. He wants us to come to Him and ask of Him if we have need of something and we des desire something. And the Lord may lead you to somebody else to ask of them. God doesn't just, now not that He can't, but He doesn't just create something for you every time that you need. You know, it's already in the earth. God already put creation in the earth. And then He's put wisdom and insight into man to build and create and to invent. And all of these things that, that come up that man has done, of course, goes back to God, but God put that in them from the beginning. The creative power, the artistic power, the, the, uh, to, to invent, to create, to, to make things, to design things, to architects that draw out things out of their imagination. And then it, someone puts it into manifestation or someone puts it into being by hammering some nails, putting wood, putting things together. They use craftsmanship to build something that someone imagined.
But God is the one that put that on the inside of people. He gave the creative ability. He put the materials in the earth to, for man to draw out of. Man can't create anything that God didn't already put the seed in for. Man can't take anything that doesn't originally come from God. Man cannot create anything that has not or that doesn't already have a base to it or the seed or the fruit of something they have to take something that god has already put in the earth and then build off of that so man has to do that but the principle of asking and receiving is a law and a principle of the kingdom and these are things that we need to be comfortable with we need to be comfortable we should be comfortable going to our heavenly father and asking of him for whatever it is if it's a need, if it's a want, a desire, anything that we want in life or desire or need, we have the right to go to our Heavenly Father and ask of Him. God doesn't want you to shy away from Him just because it's not something that is absolute necessity. God wants a relationship with you and He wants you to use the gifts and the principles that He put in His Word to operate in the earth. And if you'll learn to use these and you'll operate in these, then you'll be able to grow and, and do more than just for yourself because you shouldn't just ask only for yourself. Yeah, if you're only asking all the time and you're just trying to get, get, and build your life, well, that right there, you're doing it with the wrong purpose in the wrong manner. We should always be looking to be able to be a blessing to someone else. If I have more than what I need, I want to sow it. Even if I have, even when I do have need, sometimes Annette and I will sow things that we absolutely need ourselves. But why? We know that this person may be young in the Lord, someone we give to or, or give something that we have that we really need. It could be, our, it, sometimes it's our money, sometimes it's things that we have. We've given cars away, we've given instruments away, we've given clothes away. I can't tell you what all we've, we've given away. Is it things that we need or could use? Absolutely. But we know that God is our source and the person that we're giving to, we want to show them that God is also their source and God uses people. And when we give or we sow into someone's life and we're, we're showing them that it is, the, it is God who is still meeting their need, even though it's us that is physically there doing it, but it was God through us meeting their need. And then when they get to the place where they can believe God for more, they can be a blessing to somebody else. But a lot of times people are struggling in their faith and I, I don't even want to ask God or they feel ashamed to go to God because they think their life isn't where it should be. They, they look at their shortcomings. They look at sin that they've committed, bad choices and things that they've done wrong and they won't go to the Heavenly Father because they're embarrassed or ashamed to go and ask of Him. But remember what my father said, my dad, my earthly dad, you have not because you ask not. Don't be ashamed to go and just ask them. What's the worst they can do is say no. Now, that part's not in the Bible. What's the worst they can do? That's, that was a, 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 some wisdom that my dad, you know, a, a revelation that came to him. He's like, hey, what are they going to do to me? What, you know, would that, that's also a principle in the Bible, but I'm not sure he knew that at that time that that was where it was coming from. Don't fear what man can do to you, but fear the one who can damn your soul to hell. That is in the Bible. You don't, we shouldn't be afraid of man, but many times we are. We're afraid to get up in front of people and, and speak, or we're afraid to go talk to someone. Some, sometimes people are afraid to call people on the telephone, and there's not even a person physically there, but they're like, I don't want to call them. Just call and begin to speak. Talk to them. Ask them what you need. Tell them what's going on. But I, I'm, I'm going on a little bit too far there. But in Matthew chapter 7, this is where the principle comes in. And we'll read this. I'm going to read in the new uh, NIV translation. It says, Ask and it will be given to you. This is verse 7, Matthew 7, 7. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks the door will be opened. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, or of this natural world, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask Him? 
So in everything, do to others what you'd have them do to you, for this sums up the law and the prophets. Now this is a principle that Jesus is telling the disciples. If you ask, the, he says again in, in verse 7, Ask and it will be given. Seek and you will find. Knock and the, the door will be opened. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be opened. Now, of course, if you are asking in, from, the wrong, from the wrong people, you're seeking in the wrong places, you're knocking on the wrong doors, but where is He telling us to go to? To the Heavenly Father. And He will give us wisdom. And then if we are to ask someone, the Holy Spirit will lead us to ask the right person. Ask the person who has the ability to make a decision. Has the, ask the person. You know, if you go into a, a... I travel a lot. And if you go to a hotel, many times you'll ask somebody in the hotel and they'll say, well, I'm sorry, we can't do that. And, and there have been times where I've said, can I speak to your manager? Because many times people that are, that are in front of you are not the one that can make the final decision. They have rules that they have to go by, and they'll only do what they're allowed to do, and many times they won't go get the manager unless you ask. But when you get the manager, the manager's the one that can say, sure, we can do that. Yeah, we can discount that, or we can, we can help you in that area, or we can change this for you, or whatever it is that you need to get done that that person couldn't do. If you go to the, the one who can say yes, if you go to the one that has the authority, the final authority, because everybody has a boss, but who's God's boss? He is the boss. So when you go, when you have need in your life, why not go to the one who has the authority to say yes, the authority to move things, the authority to shake and move. You know, they call them shakers and movers, the authority to make something happen. And God has the ability to work and move on your behalf. And the Bible declares that He is already working before we even ask because He knows what we have need of and He knows what we desire. He knows what's in our heart. And God is already working on our behalf even before we come to Him. And so when we do come to God, it's not a shock to Him. It's not a surprise. He's not going, wow, man, I, if I had a little bit more time, maybe I could work on this. No, God is already working for us. And when we come to our Heavenly Father, we need to come to Him in faith, knowing that this, just like He said here, if we are of this natural world and being evil, uh, uh, compared to God, we are, compared to God, if God is good and we are evil without Him, but with Him, because He's on the inside of us, He's caused us to be righteous, caused us to be holy, caused us to be good. All the good that's in us comes from Him. So if we of this natural world, being compared to God, being evil and God being good, or us being uh, not, not, not as good as God, if He would not give, He says, you, you would not give your son or daughter something that they didn't ask for. You wouldn't give them something nasty or something harmful to them. Would, if they asked for a fish, would you give them a snake? Something that would, you know, that would take their life? No. So how much more would your Heavenly Father give you better or more or what you're asking for? He's saying your Heavenly Father is good. And if you wouldn't give your son or daughter something that would hurt them or was harmful or not what they needed or desired, don't you think your Heavenly Father is going to do better than that? We should have confidence that we can go to our Heavenly Father. What, but what keeps us from being confident? When we have unconfessed sin or we do think we, 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 that relationship, we talked about this before on the broadcast, that if, you're, if you have things that are going on on the inside of you because you know that you've done stuff, just settle that. Get that straightened out. Don't run from God. Go to the Father. Tell Him what's going on. Tell Him what you did. Tell Him what happened because when you go to Him, He's not going to turn you away. He's already accepted and received you. Just like you would not turn your children away if they blew it and messed up big time, even if they just absolutely disobeyed you, if they came right back to you and needed help, you would be there for them. You know, I had a revelation one time. I was ministering to, to the, uh, I believe it was the, the homeless outreach that we were part of, River City Love Squad. And 
and as I, this illustration came to me, and because you know a lot of people that are many people that are in poverty or on the streets, and they're coming for help. You know, when you're coming to get help, sometimes that is shame comes with that or guilt that, well, you know, I'm not as good as other people or I'm not doing as well in life and I need somebody to give me a handout and I need someone to put food and clothes on my back. And so there's there's a lot of uh, emotions that go through a person's, you know, mind and their, and their soul and, and when that's going on and they're having to deal with all this. And the Lord gave me an illustration and and it was about if my daughter absolutely turned around and disobeyed me and refused to do what I said, defied me, cursed me, yelled at me, walked out of the house and went out into the street or down or down the block, was going to run away or whatever and le- take and said, I don't ever want to see you again. And someone came up to her to harm her, to either kidnap or to kill her. Do you, do you think I would sit there and watch and say, well, you shouldn't have ran away? Or would I run out there in that street and I'd grab whoever that was and I would, it, they better pray that I don't send them to heaven for what they were getting ready to do to my daughter. If I would do that for my own daughter, how much more would our Heavenly Father take care of us and, and help us even when we don't deserve it? Because the truth is we don't deserve anything. There's nothing that we deserve. We don't deserve anything. We don't deserve the kingdom of heaven. We don't deserve eternal life. We don't, in our own self, we don't deserve any good thing. But God chose to love us and to bless us and to send Christ to pay and to, and to, to be the sacrifice, to wash away and to make us into holy and righteous and bring us back into that place in the kingdom, that relationship with Him. And if our Heavenly Father, if, we, if our Heavenly Father loves us that much, don't you think that when we come to Him and ask of Him that He is going to be available and ready to hear, to move, and to work on our behalf? We have not because we ask not. And we, in, in James it talks about when we do ask, we ask amiss because we're, we're heaping, try, either out of lust or trying to heap it on our own self. Yes, you can do it with the wrong motivation and with an impure heart. And if you go to God with an evil intent for selfish, and when we say selfish, desiring something is not necessarily selfish. Most time, most of the time when we want to do something in life, it's something that we enjoy. That's not just being, I guess it kind of is selfish, It's but it's not an evil selfish. You know, we there's things that we do in life that we enjoy, and God wants us to enjoy things in life, just like we want our children to enjoy things in life. And if it's something that gives them pleasure, then, you know, it's not a bad thing. It's not an evil thing. But when it's selfish, when something that's evil, I, would, I guess I would say selfishly evil, is when you desire something and you want it so bad and you know it's it's... It's either harmful to your family, it's going to take away from your family, or it, may, it might even destroy your family, or other people are going to get offended or hurt or mad over it, through it, and it's not a good thing for everybody. It's going to cause strife, and you want it so bad anyway that, that you're going to go get it. That's an evil, selfish desire. If you're just going to press through and you why you know you all don't know what it's like and you don't know and I'm gonna get it anyway. Well that you're you're not you're for one, you're not acting in love. And that is a wrong motive. If you go to God desiring something that it's gonna cause havoc in the rest of everyone around you, but you're gonna get what you want, then you have an evil intent. But most people when they desire something in life, that desire came from God anyway. The desire's on the inside of you to 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 whether it's to, to go out on, on a, maybe you want to go see nature and you have a desire to go on a cruise. And you say, oh, but I can't ask God to help me to go on a cruise because that's, you know. No, God wants you to do things in life that bring joy to you. He wants to bless you. He wants to be a part of your life and for you to be blessed. And He wants your family and your children to be blessed. But He don't want you to do something that's at the expense of other people. If it's, going to, uh, if it's going to harm someone else or if it's going to wreak havoc in your life or if it's going to take your time away and you're going to be captivated by it and you're going to make it an idol 
and you and whatever that is that you're you're doing, if if it's going to become something that you worship more than God, and it's going to take your you're going to it's going to consume you, then of course God is not going to going to work on your behalf to bring that into your life. He's not going to bring something into your life that is going to destroy you. If you get it, you get it on your own. But God wants you to ask of Him. He wants you to go to Him and ask, Lord, give you know the things that I'm I'm needing in life or desiring in life. I want it to come through you, and Lord, I want you to show me how to do it and how to how to be a blessing and how that I can increase so that I can be a blessing to other. Lord, I want I want my job to increase. I want my life to increase. I want to. I'd like to have a place that if someone has need something they could you know i've got an extra room for somebody to stay in that doesn't have anywhere to go isn't that a blessing having a little having you know more rooms in your house than you actually need is not an evil or unholy thing but what you do with what you have is what makes it evil or unholy money itself is not evil money has money is is an inanimate object it has no moral value to it money only respond, money only does in this natural world what we choose to do with it. It's us who makes it moral or immoral. Money itself has no moral value. It's just a piece of paper and, and supposed to be backed up by gold. But that the money or finances that we have is, is the moral value from it comes from what we choose to do with it. And that's where we have to honor God with what we have. But when we come to the Lord to ask of Him, ask, you have not because you ask not. If you're not asking of the Lord for things in your life to increase, to be more than what you are, to have more money than you have you know, to, at the end of the month, then you're being selfish because all you're looking at is what you can do to take care of your needs. Well, what about saying, Lord, I'm asking of you that I can have more in my bank account than my bills and you help me to come up higher and increase so that at the end of the month, I've got more to give. At the end of the month, I can be a blessing to a, a little single mom that is trying to raise her children and she needs to know how much you love her and I want you to use me to be your hands and feet and to be a blessing to that little lady. I want you to use me, Lord God, to be a blessing to that the, that elderly couple that are that their their income their whatever social security is not enough to take care of them and lord they've got some needs and i want to be able to bless them so i thank you lord god for increasing me so that i can do more and help other people so that i can do more than just take care of my bills i can do more than just take care of me but i can help someone else along the way if i'm only believing god to pay my bills that's evil in itself it's being selfish. I don't want to be selfish, and I hope you don't either. I want to ask of the Lord, Lord, increase me. Let me be a blessing to other people. Let me take and show your love and, and your kindness, and that, God, that when someone is asking of in need because you know the need, then, Lord, you can speak to me, and you can say, hey, your neighbor has been praying. Your neighbor has been asking. Your, your neighbor, your, your, there, there's a person at work that really has a need, and I want you to take this and I want you to meet that need. God, I want you to be able to use me like that. I want to be the person that helps to meet the needs of people, to show them the love of God and how much that God cares about the little things in their life. How much the Lord cares about all the things that are going on, and He wants us to come to Him and ask of Him. And when we do, ask in faith, believing that God is good, and he's not evil, so he's not going to give us evil. He, there's no evil in him. So when I come to God, I can come boldly knowing that when I ask of him, that it's not gonna, the answer is not going to be that he's going to give me something that is going to cause me pain or cause me to suffer or cause me to lose, lose or to take anything that I give, anything that God asks me to release in this life. It is a seed, and God is wanting to bring it back in abundance so that I can do it again. The Lord will honor you when you give of what you have, and when you let go of it, then God will bless you so that you can continue to do it again. You know, the Dead Sea is lifeless, and has no, their fish cannot live in it. It's full of minerals. It has great minerals for your 
for your skin if you want and and uh, therapy and stuff for your body if you want to float around in it but it is no good for life in it it fish cannot survive in the dead sea why because everything flows in but nothing flows out if you don't have if, if it if it comes into your life and you never flow out it never flows out of your life to anybody else if, if you're never helping someone else or meeting needs your life is like the dead sea and you are not going to be fulfilled and a happy person but the joy comes whenever that god blesses us and we become that we are blessing god uh, is trying to meet the need of someone he's using mankind to meet the need god uses people God is, like I said, He's not doesn't create. If you need food on your table, God, God doesn't create white castles and just plop and then drop them off on your front porch. But what He will do is He'll have someone that has a case of white castles that they can't get rid of, and they'll and they'll drive all the, right up to your your house and say, "Hey, I've got a case of white castles. Can you use them?" And that's a story that I've told before. But when when we were uh, young, a lot younger and our children were young and we had no food in the house and we were praying and believing God and the guy dropped off a whole case of White Castles right at the moment that we needed and we were asking of the Lord, Lord, we don't know where we're going to get the money or how we're going to get groceries and God had a way to get it to us. But he didn't just create a box of White Castles. It was already created. God already put it in the earth. If he needs to create something, he will, but he's, and he can, but he's not, he's, there's so much here that, that God wants us to be a blessing to other people and use what we have. Use what we've got, be a blessing, but don't be afraid to ask of the Heavenly Father. Don't be afraid to go to God and ask of him. Don't be afraid to knock on that door. You, he says, if you ask, you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock and the door will be opened. But if you don't knock, you keep wondering why things aren't happening. You're not knocking. Why, why are things aren't happening in your life? You're not asking. You're not seeking. Seek God's face. Trust Him. Get into His Word. Begin to worship Him. Go back to the basic things that you, you were taught as a child. Pray and ask of the Father. Father, I'm coming to you humbly because I need your help. You know, I'm 53 years old, but I'm, I still ask God every day for wisdom. When I'm on a job or I'm in a situation, I just, Lord, I thank you for helping me figure this out. Lord, I thank you for giving me wisdom. If I'm in a situation that I need an answer, I ask of the Lord. I am not too proud to say I need God's help. So go to Him, ask, seek, and knock, and trust that the Lord will bring into your life the things that you have need of, and the things that you desire. He loves you. He wants what's best for you, and He wants your life to prosper so that you could be a blessing to other people. Amen. And I didn't pray at the beginning, but I'm going to pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we worship you and we thank you. Lord, for helping us to realize that we can come to you and we can ask of you and not run away from you. That, Lord, we can ask of you. You're the one that is our source. You're the one that we're seeking after. You're the one that we have need of. And, Lord God, you have put everything in the earth already, and it's being created and being invented and, and being uh, men or, or man is creating and, and, and bring it into existence, all these things. And, Lord, you give wisdom upon wisdom upon wisdom to create and invent even more. And Father, I thank you that whatever we have need of, Lord God, it still comes from you. No matter how it gets to us, it still comes from you. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, for helping us to be a blessing, to not run from you. Lord God, whatever the things we're missing in our life, to seek of you and to knock on that door and, and, to, and to come to you, Lord God, for the wisdom, for the answer, and for Holy Spirit, for you to stir us up on the inside. So Holy Spirit, we give you freedom and right to move and to operate in our life and to show us and to reveal to us anything that's out of order, out of place that needs to be dealt with and give us the courage to deal with it. Sin in our life, Lord God, if we have sin in our life, God, you reveal it to us and give us the courage to stop. Give us the courage, Lord God, to just come to you and open up to you and, re and reveal it to you. 
And Father, we thank you in the name that's above every name, the precious name of Jesus, for helping us, Lord God, to move forward and advance. And Lord God, to trust you with our life. And we give you thanks for it in the name that is above every name, the precious name of Jesus. Amen.